Hi, welcome back. We're here with Mike Rami from Zoic Studios. He's the pipeline supervisor, and he's here checking out new gear for, for his studio, and he also took part in a really cool panel yesterday. I was hoping you could fill us in what's going on. Certainly. Certainly. So uh, yesterday we did a panel for um, uh, virtual filmmaking. The panel had John Knoll, uh, Martin Lund Lundau, um, and uh, some other gentlemen in the industry. It was five of us. It was put on by the VES. And we talked about uh, virtual production, virtual set pipeline, um, how to shoot these shows, how things change, the filmmaking process when you're on stage, in the green screen stage, and um, touched on some of our processes and what we're doing. We do a show called V. We do 450 shots in two and a half weeks of visual effects, so it's an astronomical amount of content that we're producing. And so, you know, it's important for us to figure out how to make our productions more efficient. And part of that, uh, in my job, is to come here to NAB to find ways, software, hardware, equipment, that m many of the equipment software manufacturers are making to help make our projects successful so they don't bleed. <laughs> and, and we can keep, you know, some profit margin on, on, on them because we're definitely dealing with some very complicated work. You know, we'll do five, six days of green screen shoot, and it, it's very complicated. So we have to find the right fit for our process. So what have you seen at, at the show so far that you think you could fit into your pipeline and how it will help you? So, you know, I'll just give you an idea of some of our some of the vendors that we're big fans of. Because okay. there's not too many surprises for us here at the show, but one of our big, you know, we're big fans of Isilon. You know, we use their storage. It helps us manage the complexities that we have with our pipeline. We have content coming in from Red, from Alexa, from 5D, and a lot of it. Um, so we need storage solutions. We have rendering on the farm, and we need different storage solutions for Isilon for that. And then we have deliveries. You know, so we're big Isilon fans. Uh, we use uh, a lot of Foundry work. We're big fans of the Foundry and Nuke. We're using Nuke and Mari in our production pipeline. In fact, we hadn't used Nuke prior to V. So V was an all Nuke project, and now we pretty much rolled most of the facility over to Nuke. Um, <clears throat> we're using Mari. That's their painting program. Uh, on set, we're using products um, from uh, Aja. We're using this Key Pro and the Key Pro Mini. We just did a, uh, a pilot with the Key Pro Mini and, uh, and, a, and a, an Alexa. It's really interesting because the DIT wanted to use the Key Pro Mini specifically because he wanted to find a way to match the size of the mags. So when they turned over the mags on the Alexa, they would turn over the mags on the Key Pro. So they're using the same size content so that they can turn over the mags, which makes uh, the process of managing the content a lot easier. So um, we were happy to kind of use that in, in production. Uh, recently wrote an article actually for Post Magazine on the Keypro Mini. So we're very big fans of Adaja products. Um, other fans, um, little, little companies, there's a, a company called Shotgun that makes uh, production tracking asset management. I think in the future they're going to be big up and comers. You know, all of our pipeline is built inside of Shotgun from how we review content. Do you, do you use Tweak along with it? Yes, we use Tweak as well. We use Tweak to actually review the content. So we're using RV and, and Shotgun to kind of manage the metadata, the plates, all the content, the tracking the artist who's going to work on stuff. Then we use Tweak and Tweak's RV, RV product to play back the content, to uh, notate the content. Uh, we've written all kinds of custom tools to do actualizing and projections and storage management from RV and from Shotgun. So we have a tight integration in our facility with uh, Shotgun and RV, so we're very happy about that. those products. Um, we're starting to branch out more into uh, production and looking at cameras. We, you know, One of our neighbors in Culver City is uh, Element Technica. So we've kind of reached out to them to kind of see what they have under the hood that they're developing. So when we saw the um, Atom Rig, I thought it was pretty exciting. It, it's not quite our market yet. <clears throat> you know, we, we do a, lot, a large amount of broadcast work, um, but it, they have a lot of products that overlap some of what we do in our facility. They have a, a brilliant um, field, uh, a metadata field recorder. And what it's doing is it's recording the content from their follow focus or their interocular controller, and it's recording it to a memory stick. And, and we've kind of, talk to them about using that type of product in our pipeline for virtual set tracking where we can basically lace possibly in the future maybe lace HDSDI signals with metadata that has the tracking coordinates of the camera 
you know, it's a big deal for us in virtual set work. Um, so we're really happy to kind of see them doing so well um, and really want to foster that relationship with them, uh, as well as the red guys. You know, again, we don't have our own camera or our own camera crew. Most of it's, you know, through our productions, uh, running those stuff. But uh, we saw the red ray. It's very impressive. So we've been talking to Deanne and, and um, Ted about maybe possibly using that as a dailies tool. It's 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 not the way, intended way to be used, but um, we're very excited about the products and we like seeing what they have to offer, especially the HDRX stuff. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, another company that we're really big fans of is the Black Magic. You know, they they keep growing and growing and growing. They're a big machine, and uh, we really like their SSD, um, op the field recorder devices that they have, and that new they have a new two RU or is it three RU unit that has LCDs. It's very economical. So um, those are some of our top picks that we really like a lot. Uh, just a little while ago, we had um, Nervonics on, and they do cloud storage. Uh -huh. Is that something that you guys are looking into to keep your data in? I know you have yeah. studios in two locations, yeah, correct? Two locations. Um, and, and just protecting your data. You know, it's interesting. We have, a, we have to do a lot of protecting of data. We have, we have to follow these MPA standards where they'll come out, and they'll come to our facility and audit our security measures. Now, it's not necessarily a topic, or I haven't seen it here, but we actually use this product called Teradici, and it's basically an encoding box that'll encode. It's like a KVM switch, but it encodes over, a, over Ethernet. So all of our workstations sit in our rack room, and, and then they, over IP to a box on their desk, they actually control the computer with a keyboard, monitor, and mouse. And we can have up to four monitors and two keyboard and mouses. So they're all secured, so USB access is kind of clipped off. Um, and we've done it in scenarios where, you know, we're not, we have our own two clouds, our Los Angeles and our BC office. Um, but in instances where one production needs to work on one cloud, we can do it with this Teradici technology where we can have a user in Vancouver sharing our network connection to LA via a PC over IP box that's stored, that's running in our LA office, and they actually don't even know the difference. And so, um, it's difficult for us cloud. I mean, we're saturating our, our network connection constantly, so I don't know that we could deal with an outside vendor for cloud computing for us, because we have such high volume and such turnaround. But essentially, we treat our locations as different clouds, in the, you know, when you think about it, really. And so, you know, using these things like the Teradici, you really start to kind of bridge the gap. I think in the future you'll see things like Teradici be a kind of a, a box, a set-top box that some of these cloud developers provide as a resource to people who want to use for cloud computing. So I w wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing more of that. In fact, ATI makes a graphics card that we use for some of our product producers' workstations that actually has a Teradici chip in it. So you're not even putting another card in it. You're buying a, a video card that has this encoding and decoding chip on it. So all you're doing is literally plugging in a network, a NIC connection to your computer or to a monitor. In fact, Samsung even makes monitors that have the Teradici chip into it. So I kind of see that as where cloud computing will basically meet up with set-top boxes to bring processing power back to your desktop. Um, well, speaking of monitors, I mean, that's... It's actually a big deal here at the show. What have you seen? What do you guys use now? Yeah, the monitors, we, you know, we have our, our workstation monitors that are, you know, they're, we use a lot of Dell products for the workstation monitors. Um, but our facilities are growing. Um, we recently um, hired uh, an uh, award-winning um, visual effects supervisor, Mark Stetson, who worked on Lord of the Rings. So our feature film department is growing pretty rapidly. And part of that requires us building out our facility to kind of um, work directly with the directors a lot better. So we're looking at Christie monitor projectors. Okay. So it's a, it's kind of a different thing, but yeah, we're looking at you know getting Christies for our facilities um, in LA and BC. Um, we're looking at ways that we can use those Christ we can get playback content prepared for those Christies for dailies. That's where I bring up this Red Ray as we're very excited. Because in our very short term for future, we're going to be buying a Christie. And I think along with that will come, how do we play back on it, 2K, 4K? That's where we're kind of thinking maybe the, uh, the Red Ray might be a product for that. So we were definitely looking at the Christies. In terms of 
field monitors, we saw some really neat things with field monitors. Um, I saw the um, Cinedec. Yeah. They have this really, really amazing field monitor SD recorder. Yep. It's yeah. really great. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're very impressed with it. Another one out of out of out of right field that I didn't expect. There's a company called is it Gemini or Genesis? I don't know, but they make a similar product to the Cinedec. But where is the catch? It has dual SSD drives and you can record dual SSD signals in sync. Now, we don't do a lot of stereo work, but we do virtual set work. And what that requires us to do is to acquire the green screen content independently of the composite, what you would see on the set. So what happens is those two channels go to different parts of the, of the production. One channel goes to the composite, goes to editorial. So they make their editorial selects right off of that. Then the green screen comes to us for visual effects, and we extract out out of the ProRes content, DPX sequences, to do our visual effects. The problem with all of these components on set is, is they all have a different method of storing track tick names. So the fact that you have a single device that is able to acquire content from multiple channels of data independently, it's pretty slick, and it's it's about half the size and weight of the Cinedec. So so you're you're it's very impressive so i i would say nab is kind of the year of the uh, you know of the ssd recorder i mean you have some of the, everyone's trying to compete for the market that aja started with the key pro you know we're really big fans of the key pro we use it all the time and i it's neat seeing all of these vendors you know with the competition and we're really proud of it we really like it well it's good for the industry right I think so. more competition yeah. and, so, it, and it makes a better product for us on facility you know when we're working they told us that we have to wrap up. So, um, Mike, thank you so much for, for joining us, and um, we'll be back shortly. Thank you.